G'day folks, welcome to an ICC Queensland Daily Weather Wrap today, the 2nd of the 3rd, 2023. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update brought to you by our major sponsor, TownsvilleSheds.com. Check them out if you're in the market for a shed safe, accredited shed. All right, there's Tropical Cyclone Judy. She's off to the east, uh, to the southeast away from Vanuatu. However, another tropical low is deepening, and it's deepening a lot faster than it was expected to deepen this time yesterday, which isn't great news for Vanuatu coming up over the next 24 to 48 hours. That system is going to track in a general south to south, south southeast to southeast direction, and impact particularly the central and southern Vanuatu Islands. You can see the system here on the latest JTWC warning map. We have the system tracking in a general southeasterly direction from where it is right now. The good news there is the northern half of the uh, of Vanuatu is it probably expected to just be in the gale force wind radius. It's not until we get down to around Port Villa and areas further southwards, particularly these sparsely populated islands that just cop the worst of the last one, that are likely to cop the worst of this one as well. So once we get south of Port Villa, that intensity of the system will increase and the expectation is at this stage category three once again by the time we get down into the southern islands of Vanuatu unfortunately uh, so as I say gradually strengthening system that's going to impact the southern islands most the time of impact we're expecting to see throughout Friday into early Saturday but Friday afternoon into Friday night is the time of greatest impact across the Vanuatu region into maybe very early Saturday before the system quickly pushes away to the southeast and accelerates to the southeast after Saturday morning. You can see the expected positions on the JTWC forecast track map at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and then uh, 4 a.m. on Saturday morning. You can see the system expected to be there, and then by 4 a.m. on Sunday, you can see it tracking well to the uh, well away to the east. Now, once again, expecting expecting to see this system remain well to the north of New Zealand. I have to say, from a from a negative perspective, uh, if you're living in these areas, this system has wrapped itself up very nicely, very quickly. Uh, so initially, we were expecting to see at least all of today for that system to try and wrap into one circulation because of the two different lows. Remember, there were two lows: one off town, one off Kansas coast, and one off Willis Island, and they had to merge to become one system. And then that merging process was supposed to take all day today and part of tomorrow. That merge has already happened. This morning so it's about 24 hours ahead of schedule in terms of its developmental uh, developmental prospects so the idea here is that the system will begin to develop today into a tropical cyclone today instead of tomorrow uh, and therefore it has an extra day of intensification up its sleeve before it ends up hitting the coastline uh, around these southern islands here and you can see in terms of the intensity of winds, we're expecting to see uh, sustained surface winds at 25 to 35 knots in the Northern Islands with gusts up to 45 to 50. And then as we progress this, progressively move this system in a southeasterly direction, you can see some stronger winds up around 50 to 60 knots impacting the actual uh, mainland of the main island. So this is once again, category two intensity uh, winds on the main island, maybe even nudging category three because it's had that extra time to intensify today. Uh, and then we're seeing quite uh, quite significant Category 3 type winds pushing down into the Southern Islands as we go into uh, very early Saturday. And by Saturday afternoon, you can see the system has pushed well away from Vanuatu. So once again, it's moving with a, with a reasonable amount of speed. It's not the largest system either. So once again, we've got those two factors uh, in our favour if we're in Vanuatu. But the idea is that uh, it is expected to be more intense than it was expected to be 24 hours ago. Right across Queensland today, we've got a fairly active shower and storm day across the southern parts of the state. We've got lots of light patchy rain across western Queensland. We've got some heavier rainfall around the border areas into the Gulf Country and lots of squally showers and thunderstorms, particularly squally right up in the tip of the tip and through the Torres Strait. We can see across the south, it's already unstable this morning, and that's why we've got some isolated showers and thunderstorms this morning around the border areas and around the scenic rim region of, of uh, southeast Queensland. But the expectation through the through the day is that we're going to see this instability enhanced and increase further to the north as well. So it's going to be quite an unstable day across the southeast and uh, central eastern hinterland regions. Notice that the instability sort of just gets to close to the coast before it dies out. So that means that storms probably won't be hitting their peak 
peak strength uh, on the coastline. They'll be heating their peak strength well inland of the coastline. But the steering winds will be driving them towards the coast. So there's no guarantee that you can't see a storm around the coastline. It's just that we expect them to be more prevalent inland. Uh, we can see lots of isolated shower and storm activity across the Cape and the Gulf. Lots of unstable air in there. Let's have a quick look at the max storm rain intensities to give us an idea of what sort of rainfall we can expect out of them. Yeah, some solid, very heavy rainfall potential up here in the Cape region and the Gulf Country region with our showers and storms. Less rain potential in the southeast, but I think particularly closer to the coastline in the southeastern area here, just along the escarpment areas. I think the the model might be slightly underestimating rainfall potential there. I do think we could see some reasonable falls in southeast Queensland as well. Uh, but quite clearly, the focus of attention once again, the Cape and the Gulf Country pushing into northwest Queensland, and then into tomorrow morning we can continue to see overnight and early morning squally showers and, and storms around the place. If we take a look at the accumulated precip for the region between now and tomorrow morning we can see there's some nice falls down here around southeast and central east Queensland. If you get you got to be lucky you got to be lucky to get under the showers and storms they're not everywhere but uh, some nice falls to be had there. In behind it there's a southeasterly surge coming up with shower activity too around the southeast coastline tomorrow morning uh, that we need to look out for. And we can see widespread showers and storms up in the Cape and the Gulf. This is really a key area here of, uh, of rainfall and weather over the next week or so. Nice light winds across the state today, so great stuff if you're on the water, particularly if you're in North Queensland. Beautiful day today on the water. As we progress further southwards, we still get a bit of a southeasterly flow at about 10 to 15 knots just because of the cyclone activity in the eastern Coral Sea. Uh, through the nighttime hours, we're expecting to see, or probably not nighttime, early morning, we're expecting to see a bit of a southeasterly come up the coastline. With that southeasterly, we'll see some showers as well coming up the coastline there, and conditions become quite uncomfortable for boating across southeast Queensland tomorrow with the south. Easter, and that southeaster will spread northwards fairly rapidly through the back half of tomorrow and into Saturday, making it quite uncomfortable on the water on Saturday. Northwest monsoon starts to intensify too on the weekend just because our low pressure system from the Northern Territory shifts up into the Gulf and makes life uncomfortable for boaties up there in the Gulf and uh, the NT coastline. If you're interested in way more depth and detail and you want to look further and further ahead than what we do here publicly, head over to join.ozcyclonechasers.com.au. We provide you with all the weather detail that you could possibly want across Queensland throughout the wet season. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching this video. Stay safe if you're in Vanuatu.